Welcome everyone, Dylan Jamelli here today with a brand new video for you. So today's video is on EPO, erythropoietin. Uh, but before we get into that, I have to reiterate that I am not a doctor. Anything I say in this video is for your entertainment purposes only. What you do with this information is completely and utterly up to you. And I am not implying, condoning, nor recommending you to use any of the things that we discuss in any way, shape, or form. So, um, this video is being done slightly reluctantly, but it's highly requested. And um, my reluctance is, is I know how dangerous this is. I don't want people to listen to this and even think about using it. Uh, but then again, um, first of all, it's highly requested. And then a couple people brought up some pretty good points to me about doing this video to basically warn people about the dangers of it. Um, I'm still going to give you all the facts because I always try to stay as unbiased as possible. But I can't hide the fact that I am completely and utterly against any sort of use with this whatsoever. Um, but I'm going to highlight all the facts of it. Uh, we are going to have to talk about blood doping so you can understand EPO. So I'm going to get into all of this so you can really grasp and understand what it is. And so you can also understand the severity of use. Now, anybody that follows sports, uh, you've definitely seen and heard different athletes using PEDs, right? Um, now, anabolic steroids, clearly most well-known, things like HGH. But I know that many of you have heard about EPO, all right? Now, the thing about EPO is you hear about it, you hear blood doping, but you really don't know what it is. I mean, I can't tell you all those years in my early 20s and things like that, I had no clue. It's just like, oh, he's blood doping, he's blood doping. But nobody, you, you know what's funny is like mainstream media and things, they wanna throw shade, they wanna do this, they wanna do that, but they never wanna get down and break down what exactly these things are doing, etc. They, they, they generally don't. You gotta go to websites that go into great detail and wanna explain, but if you're just listening to things on TV, you're just gonna get this, oh, he's blood doping, or he's doing this, he's doing that, with no explanation whatsoever. So how about we learn about this a little bit? Um, blood doping falls under like the same umbrella of forbidden substances. So EPO has been a source of widespread abuse and controversy among professional cyclists all the way back to the 80s, like early 80s. Uh, but let's let's get into that. Let's break down blood doping first. So, blood doping basically is referring to any attempt to improve athletic performance by basically artificially increasing your red blood cell count. So, why do you want to do that? Well, red blood cells are responsible for carrying oxygen molecules throughout your body. So, the more red blood cells you have, then the greater exp uh, energy expenditure that you, you know, you're gonna burn out during extreme physical activity. So um, there's different types of methods of blood doping. So we've got your like transfusions of someone else's blood. You've got reinfusions of your own red blood cells. And then you've got administration of enhancement drugs like EPO. Now, blood doping is a clear and utter violation of any standards that have been set by the WADA, which is the World Anti-Doping Agency, and it's banned in professional sports. Now, even with rigorous testing, it hasn't stopped people from using it and doing it. Um, there's some controversy there. It's, it, EPO's been banned since the early 90s, but the first test didn't become available until the 2000 Summer Olympics. So while it was banned, the tests weren't even available to test for it, so I'm sure it was being abused. Now. Abuse of, of EPOs made headlines everywhere. Um, think back, Floyd Landis. He was the 2006 Tour de France winner. They took his title because he tested positive for doping. Now, he confessed to using PEDs for years, and he even went further by actually accusing many other cyclists. I think it was about 17. And he also accused Lance Armstrong. Now, in 2005, a year after his seventh Tour de France win, Lance Armstrong was first accused of using EPO, and it was a claim that actually was confirmed in 2012. He publicly admitted to EPO use, and then he also was stripped of all of his cycling titles. Now, I know that cycling isn't the most popular thing in the world, but when somebody's winning as many titles as Lance Armstrong was, chances are pretty high that you've heard of him and you know a little bit about cycling at that time. Now, um, there were some other cyclists that were caught in that controversy, some champions. Um, trying to think of the names. Willie Voigt, uh, uh, Jesus Manzano, 
uh, David Milliar. These, uh, you know, cycling, like I said, not the most popular thing, but I'm a sports guy. So I do remember some of these names. Now, let's talk about the effects on athletic performance with EPO. So EPO is a naturally occurring hormone and it can be synthesized in any lab and it can be injected directly into the skin or bloodstream. Now, in terms of sports performance, it's actually been shown to increase the proliferation of red blood cells and increase the amount of oxygen carried to your muscles. Now, increased availability of oxygen is actually believed to slow the progression of muscle fatigue, which clearly you need in cycling, and increased endurance during performance athletic events. Now, think about how many miles they cycle and how important endurance is. So this is a huge, huge issue. Now, the ability to exert force for longer periods of time is what makes blood doping so appealing for professional athletes, clearly. Um, doing this may actually help to reduce the recovery time between your workouts, it can increase muscle power, and it can maintain an edge during competitions. Now, with that being said, there is evidence that EPO injections may actually deliver fewer benefits than initially thought, though, as well. There was a 2017 study that was published um, in the Lancet Hematology, and it concluded that cyclists given a subcutaneous injection of EPO for eight weeks performed no better in exercise test or road race performance than cyclists that were given a placebo. Uh, but clearly, we do know that it works, or people wouldn't do it, and they wouldn't get a clear-cut advantage. Now... This is just different types of studies that, you know, and, and the thing with studies is control groups can be skewed and changed however somebody wants to skew the results. So keep that in mind as well. Let's talk about some dangers though and why I am so reluctant to discuss this or even talk about it. EPO has been shown to induce hypertension, which is high blood pressure, by literally crowding plasma with excessive red blood cells. Now this serves to actually thicken the blood and that increases vascular constriction and the overall blood pressure. Now, greater blood viscosity then puts a strain on your heart and it increases the risk of blood clots, heart attacks, and stroke. Drug interactions may occur between EPO and medications used to treat hypotension, which is low blood pressure, including astinin, for example, and uh, mitodrine. Now, taking EPO with these drugs may actually amplify their effect, leading to drug-induced hypertension. EPO can cause severe lung toxicity. If taken with cancer drugs used to treat leukemia, lymphomas, and breast cancer, um, things like Cytoxan, uh, etc. Now, EPO and other banned PEDs are really under constant scrutiny by sporting agencies, so just remember something, that athletes are regularly tested to detect their presence. And if you test positive for EPO, you're gonna be suspended, trust me. All right, you're not getting around that whatsoever. Um, you could actually see convulsions on EPO. Um, I've also read some things about people that get in, uh, you know, flu-like symptoms, uh, your skin reactions, there could be allergies at site of injection, um, there could be some liver or pancreatic damage, there's an increased risk of developing liver and lymphatic cancers as well. And then there's also a risk of counterfeit products where you don't even know what you're getting, all right? There's risks with injection. There's, there's so many different risks that are out there with EPO, and they're severe, okay? Very, very severe. But, you know, just the, the whole blood pressure, blood thickening thing, you know, injecting, you know, possibly injecting other people's blood, things of that nature. You know, if you're considering doing this, you know, if you write me and ask me, I don't even get into it. I just say, don't do it. I'm not advising it. Um, you know, these are fact videos, fact, fact, fact. I'm going to give you the facts of the benefits. I'm going to give you the facts of the side effects. But this one, I'm giving you my opinion. All right. And, you know, if you ask me opinion, I'm always going to give it. But a lot of videos, you'll notice I don't do that. Well, I'm doing it here. Um, and it's just too bad. My video. <laughs> Dylan Jamelli signing off.